Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video I'm going to be going over my Honda CX500 colliery calf racer. Um, it's been done for a few weeks now but I've basically just been riding around on the weekends just trying to iron out all the little problems that it had. And I'm around about 95% of the way there to be honest. But the whole, the bike itself is just amazing. It's, it's amazed as how good it actually is. Um, handling is spot on, the engine runs like a dream. It's just... <laughs> I can't really describe how, how, how it is, it's, it's just weird, especially because I've built it, it just brings that certain kind of pride, if that makes sense, but yeah, well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the front and work my way back and go through all the little things that I've done, or big things, <laughs> which some of them are. First off, the SRAD GSXR front end, which um, was one of the first things I got. Um, this front end is amazing, <laughs> it's a 50mm um, fork, it's 50mm at the top, 40, 40, 54 at the, the middle, and it's just spot on, it handles a dream. Um, to go with that we've got the SRAD front wheel, um, which came with the forks along with the 320mm discs. Um, originally it did come with um, four pot calipers, but um, they were in a bit of a state and I couldn't be bothered to actually service them. So what I did was I got some Toco six pots off eBay, uh, which were a good buy off a Hayabusa, and I've got two of them. And they stop you, like, well, it's they're off a 200 mile now, a super bike, so they do stop us quite well because the bike is a heavy bike for what it is, even though I've took most of the, the stuff I didn't need off. Um, going up from the brakes, and um, we have the master cylinder. Now, this is actually a Chinese master cylinder along with the clutch lever. And it's spot on. It's replicating some aftermarket um, superbike levers, which, to be honest, if they didn't have the actual label on for the the posher ones, you wouldn't actually know the difference because they're all machined out of seeing out of aluminium, and the the grate and the stoppers no no business. And um, yeah, so I've got no problems with these, and they look they look amazing with the red and black, which just goes with the whole colour scheme of the bike, really. Um, moving on to the other side, um, we have our pressure gauge here, which is monitoring the oil pressure within the engine. Um, that was a fun little thing to fit, but it's just, just there's a peace of mind, and to be honest, it's another little point which people pick up on. It's a small point, but I think it just adds a little bit of detail to the bike. Um, moving up from there, of course, we have our little gauge there, which is an Acewell um, MD52, which is a lovely little gauge. Shows you the temperature, RPM, it's got the time on it, speed obviously, it's got loads of little little functions in there which is quite good and it was easy enough to fit as well, the wiring for that was pretty simple and like I say it just tidies up the front end, it just makes it look like you don't have any massive gauge clusters there and it's nice. Um, the ignition which was a bit of a pain to fit, but in the end I kind of I drilled the holes out and I attached it to the original um, ignition uh, mounting point for the SRAD and it, it fits there quite well, it's a bit offset, but to be honest that doesn't really bother us and then the actual other mount which the original ignition would have mounted to, I've got my clutch my little, ch well clutch I should say, it's, it's a choke I've got the little choke a lever right there just to pull it up and I can, I can say it's around about flush when it's right the way out maybe just a bit over so it's a nice little bit there and it just say skims that so it was made for this bike uh, moving on we have the tank which has been done in our oh the sun's just coming out there that was good cue <laughs> as we can see it's done in my um, black metallic metal flake type colour um, the paint itself's actually got pearlescent metal flake and metallic paint in it so it's it's a truly a one off and the red stripes going down the middle of the middle are Ducati red, um, as you can see there. As I said before, this bike is called the Colliery Calf because it's basically, um, the theme is the collieries of the industry. Now if you look over there, just behind that turbine and all the way up there, um, that's where um, Burn Hope Colliery was and there's, there's no signs it was ever there. Well, basically this is just an, well, what shall we say, a memorial for all the, not even Collieries, just the industry around here that's just not here no more, which I think's a real shame. So anyway, the black depicts the coal, and like I say, with the red, the two stripes going down the middle are the tracks, which would normally go down the mine for the ore carts to go on, or the mine carts, whatever you want to call them. And then we have the red in there depicting the blood of all the miners who died down the mines. I know this was very deep for me as well, because most people look at the bike, and then when I actually explained it to me last, she just kind of went, "Oh, that's very deep for you." So moving on um, from the, the lovely tank there, we have the single seat 
conversion which is from the Cafe Racer kit company awfully comfy just as even in this position actually I don't have aching wrists or anything I've been going around for quite a few miles on this bike now and it's just it's a dream to ride to be honest um, I'll just wait for this car to go past because it's always the way I'm halfway through recording so anyway moving on so we've got the nice and comfy it's got a load of padding in here most of the electrics are actually based underneath this um, seat which is handy because I've got a massive gap under there where the battery and the airbox used to sit which I don't have no more um, moving on to the back pod which basically is the old Honda CX Lite which I, I think looks quite good because if you if you go from this angle here it's actually got quite a calf racer profile with the light on and um, it just matches the bike spot on and I did quite like the light to be honest so it suited me down to the ground. Moving on from the light, um, we have our number plate there with the two LED number plate lights on just to make it legal in the UK. Um, you could have got a daytime MOT and not run these but um, I like to have my bikes with a full MOT so if, I ever, if I'm ever caught out in the dark I can just basically switch my lights on which is always handy. We'll then go down and work our way Back towards the front. So working our way back towards the front of the bike, we can see we have my Tech Alloy shock absorbers which have a reservoir on. Um, quite like them and they were very cheap for what they were. And like I say, the spot on the back end handles a dream, just like the front, because it's pointless upgrading the front end without upgrading the rear end. And trust us, those these shock absorbers are great and they've even got dampening control, preload control, it's everything you'll need. Um, the back um, drivetrain is basically the same as it was all I've done is polished up the brake drum as we can see there and painted the wheel metallic black the same as the frame the frames all metallic black and it looks quite good to be honest and um, we then have our twin exhaust systems here I've got a bit of a that mounts going to get painted when I get around to it but I had to actually move the whole mount up towards the, the rear of the exhaust to actually get those um, straps to hold but um, it's it's in a position now and it's well and truly stuck there and these these pipes sound amazing and I'm going to give you a quick little glimpse of that towards the end of the video. Moving along we have our R1 foot pegs which um, this is another little trick that the Calf Racer kit company does. Um, it was in the little manual so I got myself a pair of R1 metal foot pegs there those were only six quid or something, they were, they were steel and um, yeah those are great, um, definitely a lot of feel in them and a lot of grip and um, we also have these little plugs here which there's, there's actually one here and there's another two there, those are from the Cafe Racer Kit Company as well and they just finish off the bike nicely um, machined aluminium, so lovely little things there and we then move on to the engine. Now I've still got a slight radiator leak but it's nowhere near as bad as it once was so I'm going to live with it for now until I get the money to recall the radiator. And um, we have our velocity stacks on the back end of the carbs. And um, this just, a, bit, a lot of people had problems with um, the pods and CV carburetors. Now a lot of people think it's just pods in general. It's not, it's just because the airflow going into the carburetors isn't smooth. I'm putting these velocity stacks on, I'm not kidding you, this, this engine sings, it's it just, when you've got, it's got power, it's got torque, it's just phenomenal. So I highly advise, these are actually off a of Ducati, they fit straight on, they're actually the same inside diameter as the actual carburetors, so there's no step whatsoever. I'm going to get some socks for them just to basically have some filtration, because at this moment in time there's nothing, but it's alright when it's this type of weather, because there's, there's nothing really to go into your, your carburetors as such, so more than happy with that. Moving on, I've got a few little bits on the engine powder coat, such as the water pipe here, um, in black, just because it dissipates heat and also looks good. Um, we then come forward to the radiator, which, yet yeah, again, has got the Honda logo on. This is another part of the Calf Racer kit that comes with the CX. Lovely little touch there. Um, it's covered in some coolant at the moment. Oh, I've just realised there's coolant all over there. It's burst again. <laughs> Oh god, um, this this radiator has been the bane of my life at the moment because it's the only thing that I need to sort now and it's just, I've, I've tried to JB weld it but it doesn't look like it's worked, it's just ping out all over again so it looks like I'm going to have to bite the bullet and get that record but yeah, the bike itself though, other than the radiator, is spot on I just can't get over how good it is for what, what I've done to it and basically what I've done to it <laughs> So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start it up and I'm going to show you how this sounds. So if you give me two minutes, 
I'll put this camera down and I'll start the ignition and just see how low this bike is. This is starting of the Honda CX500 attempt one. It should fire straight away to be honest. I need to be on the other side of the bike. Ignition on, fuel is on, and Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> um, the revs need adjusting a bit, but other than that, um, it's spot on. <laughs> and it sounds quite nice as well. So basically, that's this project come to an end. Um, well, it hasn't come to the end. This is basically the beginning of me riding this bike and basically going around shows with it. There's a few little things I'd say the radiator needs doing, but it's not too bad at the moment. Um, but it really needs a recall. But, if if any is out there want to do this and you think you don't, you can't. Trust me, it's that's. Don't get me wrong. I know I come from an engineering background with what I do for work, but I've been brought up on these bikes. And if you can handle a spanner and a hammer, you can basically do this. Because I've just worked out we're basically an outhouse to do this bike from my grandma's up to the one I've got now. And no, no fancy tools are out, literally just a simple toolbox with all the bits I need. And basically some basic ideas of how to do electrics for the main, the main electrics in it. And once you've finished it, trust me, it's just the, the, the feel of achievement that you get at the end of it, second to none. Just to think that you're going around on something that's 100% unique. And trust us, if you've got a bike like this, people people look at you, even if they're not into bikes, they'll, they'll hear this coming down the road and they'll sit there going, well, that's something different, and you aren't going to see another one of these, which is which is also nice nice to feel, because I'm, I'm the only one going to be riding a bike like this, because this is the only bike of its kind full stop in this type of setup. But, um, yeah, it's just so good to do. So, like I say, and as always, if any of need any help with anything such as projects like this or uh, anything else bike related or so on and so forth just just drop us a message and i'm more than happy to help if i can obviously and if i can't i'll either pass you on to a video or somebody who knows what they're talking about and try and get you on on your way again so with that i think i'm going to go for another ride off down the country roads of the northeast out the way of my test track um which isn't really too private no more hence all the cars going past it but um, they shall be shot later as I say always um, but yeah with that um, I shall leave you with this excellent view of the North East no I'm not I'm going to leave you with this excellent view of the bike because I know what you all want so there you go one more look at the bike and one more pan around and as always keep safe and ride safe because the riding season's coming up and I think it's going to be a good one <laughs> and um, as always see you soon